an important topic like ethics committee i will be little more elaborate in fact uh, ethics is true to every profession every profession has got an ethics to be followed and that is more important not legal but ethical and ethical committee was uh, sometimes are so now was ethical committee but it is the right thing is ethics committee in fact there is a interesting european heart journal covid 19 and healthcare workers what is surgical ethics it is very detailed given it as lessons from bhagavad gita the righteousness and wrongfulness what is right what is wrong what is dharma what is adharma if you can follow it up throughout it will give you the best of the results in fact the word ethics is derived from the greek word ethos which means character ethics is a branch of philosophy that defines what is good for the individual and what is good for society and establishes the nature of obligations and duties that people owe themselves or to each that is the character of the individual and it was so easy in india because prior to 400 500 bcs we had ayurveda and ayurveda had a guru shishya tradition and that helped to design principles of surgical academics and ethics so easy because already a line of template is available greek healers in 4th century drafted the hippocratic oath and pledged it prescribed regimens for the good of my patients according to my ability and my judgment and never do harm anyone the medical ethics may be traced to guidelines in the duty of physicians such as hippocratic oath predominantly it is for the physicians but we will see this is hippocrates examining a patient in the abdomen and ashushuta who is also a ayurvedic surgeon of from from banaras he called the profession noble profession possessing an outstanding qualities like eminence dignity commanding excellence fine character and high ideals and morals are the dictionary meaning for noble so you have a noble profession the very term doctor demands respect more than that the term surgeon demands greatness modern medicine and surgery has a blossom you have uh, medical ethics coming up in various population and it is in 1849 percival thomas uh, detailed classification of medical ethics and subsequently post second world war when uh, unethically nazis killed the people the helsinki meet uh, the declaration was of geneva they came out with nuremberg code which is the international code of ethics in 1948 and growth of surgical specialty needed an interesting medical ethics unit for the surgical profession per se and medical ethics should be brought up in the undergraduate medical curriculum it is very important what is like a child they start respect for the elders or this thing uh, all the medical ethics principle are enshrined in the school moral education that will take them long way and the surgeon patient relationship was different from what it is today about 100 years back whoever comes to seek care must be treated like you were own relatives regardless of the social status family economic conditions appearances appearances ages races and mental abilities so respect trust empathy honesty intellect whatever adjective you use all are required for surgeons to treat their patients you can see four pillars you might be very familiar with four pillars of democracy that executive you got democracy you got uh, 
Okay. Journals, media, all that. The four pillars of biomedical ethics in this context of surgery is autonomy, justice, beneficence, and mal maleficence. These are all the four basic pillars of surgical ethics. Autonomy, act in the best interest of the patient. That is, the patient giving a full uh, permission to decide on uh, the decisions of the patient treatment. Uh, do no harm, non maleficence, which is called a primum nausea in techniques. Right to refuse autonomy. Uh, treatment for merit of the illness, justice, dignity, the right to dignity truthfulness and truth about the illness. Always respect the autonomy of the patient and their ability to make choices about their own treatment. The ethical profession, use of media in surgery. In fact, the patient is given enormous knowledge and loads and loads of treatment protocols have been taught to the uh, health education units of the media and the patient is very well aware and they have a systematic review of the literature and they go in for a second opinion. So all these are their own right, what we call it as an autonomy. So that is permissible. You have the advanced technology of media visibility, cost and insurance, healthcare economics, patients with care with CPAs, transfer of decisions, make to, making to patients and uh, enormous net knowledge will normally confuse the individual. Beneficence, the practitioner should act in the best interest of the patient the procedure is provided with the intent of doing good to the patient. Similarly, requesting the patient to have a surgery done for radical surgery for a 98-year-old lady with stage 4 CA breast, will the surgery benefit the patient? Definitely it will not. So at 98, you can think of lesser procedures or no procedure. So what is to be done best? The history of surgical ethics and Surgeon-patient relationship built upon trust, faith, and informed consent. Those days, this is all the salute the patient gives and is willing for whatever you say. Operating with poor infrastructures, unable to tackle post-operative complications, so they don't have a ventilator. Uh, the inability to tackle post-operative complications They'll make the patient sick, sufficiently acute, make sure that the procedure does not harm the patient. The ability of surgeon to exercise sound judgment and recognizing the limits of one's professional competence. It is bordering on medical malpractice. Surgeons should know where and when, when to stop scalpel and when not to operate. It is normally referred to as primum non nausea. See, the fourth component pillar of surgical ethics is distributive justice, retributive justice, and the informed consent, procedural justice, and restorative justice. These are all the four pillars of justice, and confidentiality comes in this. Ethical issues in the operation theater comes in this. Informed consent and other types of consent and, uh, are enshrined in that. Surgical research and excellent standards, equal division of resources. No priority, equity of equity or justice, uh, just telling. Fair and equal distribution of scarce health resources and the decision of who gets what treatment and when. 
VIP minor surgeries mm, and making an acute abdomen weight, weight is ethically wrong. So a lot of a lot of court litigations. The doctor is in court on Tuesdays. That is a that has become regular practice. With informed consent, it is now more than a signature of a piece of paper. In fact, uh, informed consent is decision-making capacity, complete disclosure of understanding technical details, authorization and comprehensive discussion, the surgeon and the patient, different treatment options, same results as per double-blind control trial, which is medically can be corrected. On the table consent, this is the most uh, uh, wrong, uh, unethical thing where the consent is taken when the patient is so agitated and so tensed up and with tachycardia, with hypertension, uh, you have a patient on the table and taking the consent just prior to the thing on the table as they enter, there should not be done. This is a common this thing you would have seen in the many occasions. Institutional ethics committees for research and clinical trials. Surgeons have a subsidiary responsibility of improve the operative techniques through academic research. Obviously, doing a research in surgery is difficult than a drug trial. Drug trial are, can be done much easier, but when it comes to surgery, it is difficult. The administration of such regulation is thought the research activities are approved by every institution's ethical committee, ethics committee. the human rights and privacy during surgical procedure. You have an exposure of the patient in the critical wards lying down, which should not happen. It is the job of the staff nurse, but it is up to you to correct it. Protect privacy and dignity of the patient. Chest auscultation, inspection, insertion of police catheter. These occasions are more important is patient transfer to and from the OT before or after surgery. And when you're doing a local anesthesia, you should not uh, be talking, discussing, and making a mockery of surgery. When the patient is so tensed up, and you're talking about Gavaskar got out. Comments and behaviors and OT nice, very important. Discussion of stories should be in the staff room only. No question of talking during awake procedures. No jokes and laughing, speaking loudly during induction and recovery of anesthesia. Comments regarding disease that would be said if the patient is awake. So never discuss, crack jokes and speak loudly. Appreciate the atmosphere of the theater. The ascertain professionalism and you need to be a true professional where you don't disturb the patient to any extent. Anesthetist is a full member of the surgical team. Anesthesiologists and the professions sharing the commands of two consultants, the anesthetist as well as the surgeon. So there can be Many instances where the anesthetist wants to leave early, so he insists on uh, the surgeon finishing the surgery faster. These are all petty things should not happen. This is also what normally happens. That is, truthfulness is important in tackling the situation. Patients often ask who performs surgery because he is more interested because the name border says that it is the ex-man who is the chief of the hospital. But the surgery is in fact done by the junior most person. And they are so scared, so they would like to ascertain whether it is done by the senior most person or the junior most person. Tell the truth. Explain the concept of team-based approach and the supervisory role of chief surgeon. You can always say chief was around. We were checking with him with all the every steps and the team was involved, anesthetists were there, 
the patient is perfectly all right all these positive words only you should talk to the patient how many surgeries you have done this is a very interesting thing there are people who as they come for discussions they talk with to the patient the consultant about how many surgeries you have done that is and simple appendicectomy is how many you have done but in the, we cannot blame the patient's relatives we have to tell them that they are done in thousands have you completely removed the tumor who performed surgery what is the biopsy report what is the prognosis all that are they were expected to be readily available during immediate post operative period. another important thing is professional secrecy principle of confidentiality is that information a patient reveals to a surgeon is private and has limits of how and when it can be disclosed to a third party the only thing like authorities like inquiry committees courts police stations uh, office otherwise you you can always say i will not reveal the thing even to the husband or the patient interaction with patients it has to be very soft always take care of the patient's interest always wear your id you should be identified I always introduce yourself as you enter big smile and introduce never sit on the patient's bed this is a wrong this thing do not use jargon words do not be rude to the patient it has so happened jargon words are medical words which are not jargon which is medical words like whipple procedure and all the time from beginning to end the patient is hearing the surgeon assistant telling whipple procedure you are going to do whipple what is that whipple procedure in your own patient's words you have to explain do not be rude or silent to the patient's questions avoid conversing in mobile phones during clinical examination and in the operation theater and nobody should have the mobile on during voted times the moral context of medical ethics is talk to your patient you talk to him for one hour he'll relish it as if it is for one day honesty integrity mutual respect trust empathy all that will induce by just talking to the patient for a minute transformation and challenges of the surgic surgeon patient relationship is very important you need to communicate uh, then and there what is happening suddenly the bp drops to 14 to tell the patient uh, has a low bp now we will have to resuscitate we will going to get blood for the patient and we will wait for him to get better so these are all the soothing words you have to say the transformation of challenges surgeon patient relationship conflict of interest confidentiality professional secrecy and the mighty media is always around you don't want somebody to be shown in the hospital so it is the responsibility of the patient and the surgeon to maintain confidentiality who was operated what was the condition what was the diagnosis all that you don't expect you anybody to ask you and you need not answer them back present day scenario the demanding patients attack on hospitals and doctors in spite of correct prompt treatment a typical approach is the only solution that is see the policeman enters the entire bed has been thrown out and uh, people were hit this is a very common this thing is rising in number which has to be controlled which has to be corrected google friendly patient the other way around just a minute talk before you do anesthesia i want to update my facebook status as an anesthetist so he has a laptop in his hand and then would like to google which is not very correct medical council medical councils conflicts the interest of relationship with industries and unnecessary this thing which are all legal star stuff not gone into the detail consent 
I told you our informed consent. The earliest expression of fundamental principle is an autonomy is by Nuremberg Code. Nuremberg Code was adopted immediately after World War II in response to medical and experimental atrocities committed by the German Nazis. Medical Council's importance. The greatest greatness of a surgeon is measured beyond qualification, beyond skill, academic brilliance. He may be intelligent, creativity, courage to face challenges, perseverance, working for 18 hours in a cooperation theater, leadership qualities, professionalism, and ethical practice. All that leads on to a good practice and a successful uh, surgeon. You may have been very skillful, you may be very intelligent, you may be very academic, but still if you are not practicing an ethical practice and you will not be a successful surgeon amidst the society. Very important. A good surgeon knows when to operate, how to operate. A better surgeon knows how when to operate. The best surgeon knows when not to operate. Whoever comes to see Medicare must be treated like your own relative. That's why I already I told you. Privileged communication, communications like the academic publications, court or medical border. Otherwise, you don't disclose your patient's medical illness. Treating the patient as an individual is important. Dignity and respect for the patient. You say, Mr. A. S. Yes, some uh, 56 years instead of going to the wrong uh, chief, this case is come from Kandarapet. That case is come from uh, Mandavali. So don't do all that. It is better to call it as Mr. A. Sukumaran, 56 years coming from this. That's the way you present it to your chief. So, don't call it this case. This is what I was telling you. Exposure to the body, dress, people gathering around the traffic, noise, making all the surgeons and anesthetists chatting, comments, honesty and consent. And whenever, whenever you try to publish, reveal a patient's identity, in academic publication, you have to cover the eyes so that the individuals will not be revealed, identity will not be revealed. Michael Debecki, the greatest cardiovascular surgeon, made his first draconian the Decron vascular graft for his wife's sewing machine and used to correct aortic aneurysms. Truly an intrepid surgeon. So you clinical phase three trials, bioethics and ethical committees, uh, academic reporting, animal rooms are all important. Ethics for surgeon, uh, I think I'm here to be counseling the patient, operating data, discharges and all that. Explain to the procedures, alternatives, all that are important. Clinical examination of corridors and elevators. See, the patient has been wheeled out of the bed, kept in the corridor, and the senior surgeon is examining the knee joint, which should not happen. It should be examined only on the cord. Patient coming to OT are stressed and worried. They need privacy, silence and assurance. Noise should be kept to the minimum. Discussion should be taken in staff rooms only and not about cricket discussions and all this as you are operating. Unethical acts. Now comes bordering on legal aspects. Moral duties, going on to ethical duties, from on to legal duties. Advertising, 
patients and copyrights, running a laboratory or a medical shop, rebates and commissions, secret remedies, human right violations, euthanasia. So it is a very broad subject which has to be uh, read and start reading from undergraduate days. In fact, conflicts of interest, you are an um, owner of a medical pharmaceutical industry running a hospital. You send all the hospital drugs to the farmers and farmers to the hospital and make money. Legal implications, Medical Council Regulations 2002, last amended in 2010, but uh, still there are a lot of changes in the Medical Council uh, memberships and all that. Medical etiquette refers to the courtesy for which a doctor should treat the colleagues. So this is uh, mm, not from the patient's angle, it is between doctor and doctor relationship. Responsibility to fellow physician, very important. No rivalry. Consultation not to take charge of the case. Conduct in consultation, second opinion, must be sought when you have uh, Consultant available, not to criticize or referring to a physician. Very important. You should give respect to the colleague, request another physician to attend the patient during your absence. Very important is the responsibility to fellow physician. You should not say, I know him, he is bad. People world over still wish to see the doctors as trustworthy and honorable citizens. That is because it is the age old tradition. No two individuals are the same. You find uh, the extreme obedient patient or the rebellious demanding suit individual. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For the Nice lecture with so many marvels. Anyone wants to comment or Tamil. Ask, ask any questions from the audience? We can ask. So what exactly is this ethics committee and what does it do? No, no. Every hospital conducts a lot of trials and uh, particularly in drug trials, uh, dissertation trials, uh, and then uh, uh, group trials. All that are done by SPM, pharma pharmacology, surgical, medicine. All that trials have to be a, uh, ethical. And the ethical committee, I was the chairman of ethical committee for three years, Madras Medical College is heading the committee, where you have to go through the details and there is any unethical this thing available which should not be permitted. So, in medical ethics, it should confine to and it should be followed guidelines of medical ethics. See, uh, accepted thing like salt produces uh, hypertension. So, you cannot give, withhold the patient from giving salt for a person with high hypertension. You give, continue to give salt. So, this is all well established norms which should not be conducted as which is unethical, which should not be allowed. So, which are all accepted by double blind trials and all this, just means that you cannot redo a trial with uh, the details which are all already available. Surgery it is sometimes difficult to enforce trials. But pharmacology has the phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 trials which are easy to conduct. But when it comes to clinical trial, it is difficult. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any, any other comment or question to Professor Kumar? So, there are no questions. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, we shall see you sometime next week. Thank you. Thank you.